Rio versus learning curve. Who did it better? We'll be diving into the history of Rio and Thomas Winter Railway and talk about each unique characters on the products. What if I told you Learning Curve's Thomas Winter Railway was only able to continue on because of Brio? What? How? How could that possibly be? Look, the it's history it's of Brio it's all it's starts it's with this happily married couple, Ivar and Sissa. In time, the two couple decides to make wooden baskets for people, and at the tender age of 18, with their lifetime savings, invest 77 SEK to the business. Wait a second. 18? Brio was in the hands of a couple 100% not afraid of anything. This couple probably eats fear for breakfast. The dark is afraid of them. Eventually their business grew and evolved and fast forward 23 years, they started manufacturing their first toy, the horse. A year later, the two couple decided to retire and hand down the company to their three sons, Victor, Anton, and Emil. And they scaled the company and in 1934, they renamed their company Brio. They also started producing red painted toy trucks. And yes, that is an uh, elephant. Later, Anton's son Leonard took over the company and in 1958, Brio finally introduced their wooden train series. The original Brio train sets were made from beech wood and featured a series of wooden tracks and wooden train cars. The trains were designed to be compatible with other wooden train sets and allowing the children to build larger and more complex track layouts. Hang on, why is there sad music on? That's supposed to be a good thing. I don't know. Over the years, Brio has expanded its train line to include a wide range of accessories such as magnetic couplers, battery powered engine trains, and remote control trains. And eventually, Brio introduced Thomas the Tank Engine. But obtaining the license for Thomas was not easy. You might not be interested in war, but war is always interested in you. And in this case, Brio and Learning Curve went head to head with licensing. Learning Curve was in charge of North America and some European countries in Asia, while Brio was in charge of 90% of European countries. For Brio, Thomas the Tank was just another side hustle because their revenue was diversified. If Brio was a YouTuber, it would look something like this. Hey, Brio here. Today I'm going to show you how I built 12 income streams in my 20s. Don't forget to smash that like button and use the link below to buy my stuff. For a learning curve, Thomas was their lifeline, and in their position, it was better to defend than attack their market share. Learning Curve had to figure out how to slowly take over Brio's market share, and in 2003, Learning Curve did in fact acquire the worldwide right for Thomas the Tank Engine toys, and unfortunately Brio Thomas discontinued in the year 2000. During this year, I believe both Learning Curve and Brio had magnificent designs. During the hard time, it created strong men. Strong men created great times. Great time created weak men. And weak men created Led Thomas and let Thomas created Hard Times again. Then Hard Times created TAT Thomas, best quality Thomas, and Great Times got men weak again, and weak men created Thomas Wood. And cycle continues on. Rewinding back, Thomas Brio trains had unique characteristics that separated them from the wooden railway series. The face, the wheels, the magnets, the roof, where the wooden railway tried to copy for a while, the red buffer beam, yeah, um, there are other color buffer beams too. I don't know why I said that, just sounded cool. Oh god, what the heck is that? That face you're witnessing over here is the prototype Thomas. Comparing the two with the released version, everything looks the same except for the face. All the characteristics look identical. Brio Thomas was first available in 1996. Thomas was also found from Thomas Wooden Railway Set 1 and Set 2, and later in 1998, Thomas was available in the big adventure set and the gift pack. Both of these packs are very rare. Later in 1999, Brio released a battery-operated Thomas with its Brio characteristics, but also added red boiler stripes. Edward, Henry, Gordon, and James were all released in 1996. Edward and James used magnets to connect them to their tenders, but Henry and Gordon had hooks. The hooks gave it a better degree of freedom to go through steep curves. However, it had major flaws going up hills. Brio's Thomas line had a lot more accurate proportions compared to the Learning Curve's Thomas. They made the wheel configuration identical to the TV show. Except for this Gordon, which they incorrectly depict as 460 instead of 462. Later, James and Percy were also available as a twin pack. 
ultra rare. In 1996, the characters Toby, Stepney, Annie, Clarabelle, Trolls of Truck, Scruffy, Terrence, and Birdie was also available. When I first ran into Toby, I got super excited. Why, you may ask, I thought this was a factory error with a Mavis face. But then I realized there was no Mavis with Brio and it ended up being Brio using Mavis's face for all Tobys. The cow catcher has stairs for people to climb up the door. Bruh. Terrence is probably my favorite Brio item. Later down the years, I believe Wooden Railway copied Brio's design to their own with the same proportions as the Brio. And I think Learning Curve may have copied Annie and Clarabelle's face design from Brio as well. Okay, we're about to fast forward two years. In 1998, Duck was released. This is Duck, and that's a Super Duck. Brio was releasing new characters every year. The very last round of Brio was produced in 2000. During that time, the Magic Railroad characters Oliver, Toad, and Butch was also released. Dodge and Splatter are the only trains that have gray wheels. This is a prototype diesel 10 with a Toad face. If we were to do a comparison with the Brio Diesel 10 and the Wooden Railway Diesel 10, the Wooden Railway's Pinchy is limited to only one direction. Brio used a magnet version of the Pinchy that was connected with a string, and it is multi-dimensional. Oh, so cool, yes. That's until I realized you don't really get too much control with the Pinchy with just a strand of string, and I personally like Learning Curve's Diesel 10 better. Brio produced yearbooks starting in 1999 in both English and Japanese. They also produced advertisement posters. And wow, this image over here looks so cool. I think it will be a perfect thumbnail. We're not gonna build this just for a thumbnail. And while I was recreating these layouts, we got to use all five destinations. Instead of Learning Curse Elsbridge Station, Brio had Wellsworth Station. I like how they added more details for the walls for Henry's Tunnel. Learning Curve's version of Henry's Tunnel is just a brick block, but Brio made sure it aligns with the track as well. Turntable came with a three-step instruction. Step 1. Park the engine. Step 2. Click as it turns. Step 3. Change the direction. And while I was unboxing, I found out Thomas Railway Crossing Expansion includes a signal man. He isn't part of the four figure pack, so that was pretty cool. And finally, the windmill uses green blades. This might just be a piece of toy to somebody, but that doesn't matter. For us, it's a priceless memory of our childhood. Time spent with our- sorry, it's not that deep. Well, the story ends right where we started. Who did it better, Thomas Brio or Thomas Wooden Railway? Well, they sure like making mistakes.